Hello everybody, welcome back. Hope you guys are all having the slowest of small weeks. It's been a pretty amazing one over here this week. The weather has definitely turned cold, but it has not broken my spirits. <laughs> we got one of the most beautiful pieces of woodwork that I've seen, uh, done, delivered from Eric. Uh, and I cannot wait to share that with you guys. Uh, obviously the thumbnail is a bit of a spoiler. First bit of weekly news, the tree limb is gone. Uh, me and my grandfather and uh, a long-term family friend, Doug, uh, came up and made that all happen. Uh, Doug did say it was one of the scariest things he's done in a long time. <laughs> and it was, because it was quite precarious. Uh, but we made it happen without any instance, any problems, other than a broken rope. So, hey, I consider that a win. So, Doug, Grandpa, if you guys are watching, thank you guys. You don't know how much uh, time, money, energy, everything that you guys have saved me. And head and heartache. I mean, that limb could have easily come down on the building. Or could have easily come down on my or Kim's vehicles. It also did solve one of my other big problems, which is the Squirrel Super Highway. That branch was the main highway for the squirrels to get up onto my roof and therefore inside the mansard roof through the dormers. So that is at least one of the routes they take out of the way kaput gone, which is amazing. Uh, there's another little tree in the back that needs a very small branch cut, uh, which shouldn't be a problem with a ladder and a pole saw. Uh, so I'll be taking that out sometime next week. And then looking for any other routes that those little rascals can get up and onto the roof. Uh, because we definitely want to limit their access to that area and uh, limit the amount of damage they can do in the future. All right, so let's get to that larger project I was talking about. That over there is the larger dormer. This here is the smaller dormer. This little room was actually, I think, the trunk room back in the day. Trunk room because they put all their luggage in here when they weren't traveling. But the entire third floor is actually all drywall on the ceiling. Unlike every other floor, everything else was plaster. This up here is drywall. And as you guys know, I have been fighting one particular species of animal <laughs> up here for the longest time, and that has been the squirrels. Now the squirrel is living somewhere up here or potentially somewhere here, but most of the ceiling doesn't have any drywall. That room doesn't have any drywall on the ceiling. This room has like one piece of drywall. Everything else is gone. And so I'm assuming he's somewhere from here forward and I really need to get a good look at the inside of this dormer here. So that piece has to go and everything through here. So this whole ceiling is about to come out. Now wish me luck with this because this is gonna be A, a very gross thing. Not only is there fiberglass insulation up above the drywall here, but there's probably a squirrel's nest, uh, almost undoubtedly. Uh, if you've been with the channel for a long time, you know that in the far other room over there, I found a mummified squirrel in his stash. So. This has obviously been an ongoing problem with this house for quite some time. And uh, who knows, I might have to fight a squirrel today. Although I really don't want to. I do have one measure that if I can get everything down and out of the way, I should be able to help pushing him away. But I was told by a good friend that mothballs will dissuade squirrels from coming into the area. Supposedly they really don't like mothballs. I threw some up there about a week ago up in the rafters as far as I can get them back. But as soon as uh, I remove this stuff, I'm gonna leave a bunch of this sitting right here in this dormer. He comes in about right here on the dormer. So if I can just get a bunch of it right there, that should stop him from coming this way. Or at least dissuade him from coming this way. Let's hope. Uh, it is getting colder, of course, and I know they're trying to hunker down for the winter. Um, but it is eviction time and the squirrels are going to have to move on. <laughs> Uh, my house is no longer their house. You know, they don't pay any rent, so. All right, enough talk. Let's get the respirator on, get covered up, get some gloves on, and start removing the ceiling. Thank you. 
All right, so we have a nice open ceiling now. I can see kind of into the dormer, which is nice, which of course is the main goal. Seems like the right side of the dormer is doing pretty well, or the left side if you're outside facing in, and then the left side or the right side if you're on the inside uh, is doing pretty poorly. Of course, about right here on the dormer, it seems to be where the squirrels have opened the hole real big on that big crown molding on the outside. And that has really caused the problems. Obviously the ends of all the decking up there were exposed to the weather for quite a long time. They rotted away, fell. Uh, the only thing up there now is just the slate, which is that piece you can see right there behind this piece of wood. But also unlike the other dormer, the window in this one's quite a bit smaller. So the actual part of the dormer is in here. So I need to open this up because the glass goes all the way up on the other side. So if I can open this side up, I'll have a better picture of exactly what's going on. Uh, one thing I can say that's definitely positive about this is there's a lot more framing up here and a lot more structure to this dormer than there was on the other one. So maybe some of that's in decent enough shape to keep up there and let it keep doing its job. So far, I have found three dead squirrels, <laughs> uh, mostly mummified, uh, two very mummified, one well on its way to being a mummy. Um, so that's uh, the mummified squirrel count of four, <laughs> which is too many. Uh, but it's starting to get dark here. Uh, I've started hearing the other squirrel trying to get back in here. So uh, I hear him out here on the, um, well, up, up there and then out here on the uh, slate on the front on the mansard. And it's starting to kind of get dark in here. I'm using this light, which makes everything, of course, a little creepier. Um, and I don't really want to have to fight the squirrel at night. Uh, I'm hoping, again, that the mothballs that I threw up there, I threw one right up at that hole where they're all coming in. I threw a big pack of them up there. Hopefully that deters them from even coming in at all. Um, but I think this is a task that I will end up probably doing tomorrow, which will be Monday for you guys. And I'll probably go ahead and just start editing the video <laughs> as opposed to trying to fight the, the squirrels so you guys can have a video for tomorrow. Really quickly, I did want to share with you guys where I think the squirrels are really hanging out the most. And if we come from the room we were just in and we come over here, this is a cedar lined closet. Uh, so it's all beadboard, but it's all cedar beadboard. Uh, the reason for cedar is you would hang up your furs and stuff in here and the moths wouldn't eat them or other random insects. So cool feature, it's got some built-ins, it's in pretty good shape, nothing really wrong here. However, because the ceiling is lower here than it is there, that means above here, there's a gap. So up here, there's a nice big gap. And that means that there's quite a bit more space above this closet. So I'm having a feeling that there might be more squirrels hanging out up there, which isn't gonna be a fun place to clean them out. Hopefully there's not as much insulation up there because when they put up plaster originally, they did not insulate. But when somebody redid this entire floor, again, everything up here is drywall. So, and because that is the original ceiling, that means there's probably not insulation above it. Um, probably just plaster above it. But it's a mystery for another day once I go ahead and rip all this down. Which I'm not quite ready to do because this is in the stairwell. And if I rip anything out of here, that means... If I rip the ceiling out now, that means immediately all the dust will head down to where I'm currently living. So that means I would need to do some plasticking up because, you know, really don't want to aggravate my wife and I don't want to go through all the dust either. <laughs> We've done a pretty good job about mitigating the dust living here, um, but I certainly don't. So I certainly don't want to go adding to a huge amount of it without a solution in place to stop all of the debris falling down. So. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hopefully uh, there'll be no squirrels living here after the dormers are done. Uh, hopefully we can catch them while they're out and shoo them away. But if a cut does come down to it, I'm not scared. I will, I will fight a squirrel. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how this all plays out.
we've all been waiting for, to see this miraculous sunburst. The pediment that goes above the dormer, where all that really awful plywood is sitting currently. These are individual sun rays. You can actually see how each of them are shaped ever so slightly differently as far as the radius is concerned. Obviously, as you move further out from a triangle, you get more of a radius. And the ones on, of either end, so that one and this one here, are obviously longer than the ones in the center. But enough about what all this is looking like. Let's go ahead and assemble it. That way you guys can get a really good representation of what this is really going to look like on top of the house. Here it is. A thing of absolute beauty. So you can see why this took quite a bit of time to figure out. It's a lot of angles, a lot of cutting, a lot of shaper work. You can even see that there's a peak a high ridge on most leaves that extends all the way to the top where it gets narrower, but towards the bottom it actually completely rounds over. And getting all of that right on each piece, when every piece is a different shape, different length, it has a different bottom on each, every single one. Uh, the radiuses here are completely different. <laughs> so this was a mathematical nightmare. Uh, but Eric knocked this out of the park. It's absolutely gorgeous. When you compare it to the original from the photo, you can tell just how beautiful this house was originally and how beautiful this is going to look when it's back up. Of course, this will be surrounded by more moldings and fascia boards. But this will sit atop the mansard roof here very, very soon. Again, this probably will not be happening next week, this going up. Uh, paint layers are taking more time to dry. Just because it's a bit colder and we've had a bit more rain, humidity actually affects this paint as well. Uh, so this is about day three, and you can see there are some brighter spots. Those are spots that are still a little bit wet. Overall, they were dry enough to handle, so that's good. So I can set this whole thing up and show you guys what it was going to look like once it gets up there. It's also going to be one of those really rare opportunities. I mean, this is going to be, you know, 45, 50 foot in the air. So all of this detail and stuff is going to be much harder to see up there. But this is how they did it back in the day. We wanted it right. I think it's going to show once you look up at this beautiful <laughs> pediment that it's just going to really, really shine. He didn't even go out and actually even buy this. He actually made this on his lathe, which is pretty amazing. And I think the colors on it are beautiful. I think this is just going to really sing once it gets up there. Now, a few things to go over with this. There is this board that it's sitting on currently. This is some of that particle board. It's literally just sawdust glued together. That is obviously not going to be the backing on this. We're going to do how they did it back in the day, which is kind of like the decking that you see on the uh, dormer. We're basically going to have strips of wood, strips of decking laid behind this, and that's going to be the support for most of it. So anybody who saw me putting on the first layer of paint here uh, should know that even though this is a very light colored wood, this is actually cypress, not pine, not anything like that. It is a very, very rot resistant lumber. Anything we're putting back up on the mansard roof again is rot resistant. And also always coated in this stuff here, which is a wood preservative. Uh, really amazing stuff, this wood life. Now, of course, I haven't been around long enough or lived long enough to see how it really performs, uh, but Eric and a lot of guys go by this stuff and they, they swear by it, so I'm, uh, <laughs> I happen to believe the guys that have a lot more experience than me with this stuff. So everything that I've put up here, including my windows, all have wood life on them. So hopefully this entire beautiful piece of art here will last well well beyond myself again once this thing goes up i never want to have to mess with it again i just want to have the rest of my life to admire it of course i mean admire it from afar because of course when it's that high up in the air i can't really get terribly close to it i suppose every decade or so i'll probably have to go back up there clean some stuff off so i got a few really good questions this week that i wanted to go over and i'm going to use this beautiful piece of artwork uh, for the explainer so let's go over them because I think I haven't really told you guys enough about each of these elements for you guys to fully grasp and understand. 
And of course, one of the most important things to be on this channel is giving out information that I found out that way you guys can use and improve whatever your projects are. So let's get into it. So first off, let's get into what is linseed oil paint and why am I using it over any other type of paint on the market? The linseed oil paint is actually the original paint of the house. Of course, they called it lead paint back in the day because it was linseed oil paint with lead in it. This has a different metal in it. Now why lead was added to this type of paint in the first place is lead will not allow mold growth. Linseed oil is a natural product coming from linseeds and therefore has the possibility to go rancid, has the possibility to mold, which is why a lot of people don't use it anymore. Without the lead, it can get pretty bad. So zinc oxide, as you can see here, is the chemical they use to stop the mold growth. It is the antifungal agent in this, and it acts just like the lead without as many terrible things for the environment and for people. Now why this paint over anything else is because it has a massive amount of longevity. This stuff will not crack, it will not splinter, it will not pop and peel. Now what this paint will do is over a rather long period of time, give it 10 to 20 years, somewhere in that range, because this has so much sunlight on it being south facing, this might start giving off a more dull appearance and almost a chalky appearance. Now there's no problem with most of the paint on the thing, just the top layer has started to break down slightly. So you have to come through with either a linseed oil soap or a new coat of linseed oil, but mostly just the linseed oil soap and rub down the thing and it will bring, it will take off that broken layer and shine it back up again. So essentially instead of repainting this every, you know, 15, 20 years, and that's a full scrape and repaint, I will just have to wipe everything down gently with some soap. So that's why I'm using linseed oil over anything else. It is just a much longer lasting product. It is also expensive, but realistically there's not a huge, huge amount of woodwork up there. And as far as I'm figuring right now, one of these cans, these liter cans, will do more or less all of each color that I need. Now with this paint as well, do I paint the ends or the backs or anything like that? I do but I usually just leave it as the primer layer. That should be enough material or enough paint in this case in that area where it should never really be a problem. Again, the primer coat literally just being 30% paint to 70% raw linseed oil, or sorry, boiled linseed oil. Raw linseed oil is for interior projects. So let's go on to the next thing, yeah? Next question is why doesn't anybody ever see me caulking any of the woodwork and why haven't I done that? And am I going to do that? Simply put, no, I will not be caulking any of this stuff. The main reason I won't be doing any of that is because there's an old school of thought on all of this old woodwork and old houses in general. Water always finds a way in. How do you let it out? So for instance, this is the top of the piece. This will be down. This will be a straight vertical up and down piece. If I were to caulk the bottoms of this, eventually between the beam, Eventually, between the rays, water will find its way in. And now I've created a dam here. And once you've created a dam, you've got a really, really good way for that water to stop, stay in this area, and eventually rot out the entire bottom of all of this wood. And actually, I've seen a huge, huge amount of exactly that process happening all over the house. You have to allow, especially with old houses, houses to breathe. Materials that you use need to be able to breathe. That's why lime mortar is so important in old masonry. It's why, you know, again, linseed oil is such a good choice because it allows wood to breathe, by still, but still protecting it. In fact, it doesn't even have to be caulk all the time to cause problems such as that. Just painting this shut on the bottom with a latex or oil-based paint means that water is not going to be able to escape from here. I've, you know, pulled corbels off the house where just that's happened. The only thing holding anything together is the paint. The wood behind the paint has completely crumbled away and is just dust. So I've put a lot of thought about the materials I use here because again, I really only want to do this once in my life. I think once is enough for my house anyways. Maybe I'll get into some other ones later dates, but for this house, I want to do everything once. One time, pay once, and do it right. Especially since now I'm 33, everything on my body works, I'm functional, I'm healthy, and I'm young. Once I'm 70, I'm not gonna wanna go back up in the lift. 
I mean, maybe I will. Who knows? I might be that crazy old man. I'm looking forward to that. But I think for my place, I think I just want to do it the one time. <laughs> but if you do absolutely need to caulk something shut, I recommend not using caulk or any kind of latex or silicone, and instead getting yourself some of this. This is glazing putty. This is glazing putty for windows. Uh, this just happens to be a Sarko type, but you can go and get uh, realistically any type of this would be just fine. And uh, believe it or not, this is also linseed oil. <laughs> That's the main ingredient in glazing putty. I believe it's actually just clay, uh, a certain type of clay and lens mixed with linseed oil. And that's, that's it. That's glazing putty. Uh, but actually has Eric has discovered, uh, going through and, uh, learning from the old guys themselves that built these houses, how they built these houses on a lot of the 1860s, 70s and 80s and 90s houses he's worked on here in the city and in Illinois. Uh, a lot of the guys filled nail holes with glazing putty. Um, and, you know, from what he said and from what I've seen of it, the glazing putty is still there 100 and, you know, 30, 40, 50 years later. So this is actually a really good option to fill nail holes, to fill small cracks, to fill things like that. It actually is elastic and, you know, sticks around for quite a long time. Again, that's why a lot of old windows still exist too. So a uh, really good idea to use this stuff. And again, guys in the 1800s use this same technique. And almost undoubtedly, if they did it back then, it means it would last. Um, again, those guys didn't really like coming back and fixing things either, so... <laughs> I trust those guys more than I do any kind of modern product. Um, so if it's good enough for them, it's typically good enough for me. Unless we're talking about the framing of my dormers for some reason, because they did a terrible job there. Everywhere else, though, in the house, most of the quality of every product that I've touched has been A+. Just very good. So that's one technique that Eric has taught me, uh, passed down from the past, <laughs> uh, and rediscovered by Eric, and then uh, told to me. So I think that's a really, really good method if you want to fill nail holes and stuff like that. And of course, because this isn't nailed down to its actual boards yet, this will have nail holes that will be filled with that putty right there. And again, linseed oil, linseed oil, we're going to have no problems as far as filling those holes and the paint accepting the new product on it. So it should work wonderfully. So ladies and gents, that is the video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. I do want to say before you guys all go that there are a few projects that I'm looking into starting back up. Uh, a being the shower, because I'd really love to have a shower here. It'd be great. You know, love my father. Love having an excuse to go visit him when I need a shower. So it would be nice to come home from a hockey game and uh, immediately just come home and have a shower. <laughs> Uh, so the needle shower is something I'm definitely going to be working on here in the very, very near future. I think I figured out the materials I'm going to use on the so shower surround, uh, which is actually taking the hardest part because I can't actually build any of the framing until I know exactly how thick the material is uh, because that needle shower doesn't adjust. It is the width it is, it is. So, of course, there's going to be a lot more beautiful woodwork and a lot of extremely cold days in the lift, uh, but it doesn't matter, I think, uh, seeing the... Uh, old girl get her gorgeous jewels back I think will warm my heart enough to not have to worry about the cold um, I'm too eager to get this done to let the cold bother me that much although I foresee some warmer socks being purchased off of Amazon here very very soon because <laughs> that's the only thing that really seems to get super cold is my toes these days but that could be down to my shoes having holes in them as well <laughs> I'll see you guys next week with some more surprises some more fun and hopefully more good news so you guys take care of yourself. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. So take care. Bye-bye.